AMD is finally launching a brand new graphics card and this Radeon RX 7600 is supposed to be an affordable card that should offer good performance with improved efficiency as well as some very useful features like AV1 encoding, for example. The recommended retail price will be $300 in the US or a bit over 300 euros here in the EU. And with this aggressive pricing, AMD is trying to offer a very good alternative to Nvidia's current most affordable model, which is the RTX 4060 Ti. Now, of course, that will all depend on how well this AMD card performs. So in this video, uh, we're going to see how well it did in 30 different games on 1080p as well as 1440p, how it compares to the RTX 4060 Ti, and which one makes the most sense to buy. Let's begin. Unlike Nvidia that is expanding their product list from top to bottom, AMD made a straight jump from their high-end RX 7900 XT all the way down to the mid-ish tier RX 7600. Now, I'm sure a 7500 will follow at some point, but the 600 class cars are usually what you want to look at if you want something that's affordable, but it can actually play the latest games comfortably. And that is kind of what AMD is trying to offer here. They said this is a card that will play everything at 1080p and run all your eSports titles at 100 FPS or more even at 1440p. And if we look at the specs, that does seem reasonable. It is a nice upgrade from the RX 6600. It has more cores, uh, higher clock speeds, and faster memory than its predecessor. But it also has the newer architecture and a newer production process, plus some dedicated AI accelerators. Now, the TDP is slightly higher at 165 watts, but that puts it in line with the RTX 4060 Ti. Of course, I'm going to talk about the actual power consumption a bit later in this video. The card I managed to get my hands on is the RX 7600 Gaming OC from Gigabyte. I did not get the reference card from AMD, but I'm really happy uh, Gigabyte managed to send this one perfectly on time for me to make this review. The gaming OC is as you would expect. Uh, it is a very decent three fan card with a neutral color and a little bit of RGB. I do expect that it will cost a bit more than the $300 MSRP, but since the performance between different versions is so small these days, it won't really affect the comparison with this NVIDIA card. It is powered by a regular 8-pin power connector, which should be the case for most RX 7600 cards. And on the back, you get two display ports and two HDMI 2.1 ports. I will be comparing it to this RTX 4060 Ti, which also launches today, but the first reviews went live yesterday. The 4060 Ti is Nvidia's most affordable 4000 series card with an MSRP of $400, so it is 33% more expensive than the AMD. However, Nvidia will be launching the RTX 4060 non-Ti in July that will also cost $300, so for now, this is the closest card in terms of price. But let's check out a few games and let's see how both of these cards actually perform. In Spider-Man Remastered, the RX 7600 does all right, uh, hitting 123 FPS on 1080p and 90 FPS on 1440p. However, the RTX 4060 Ti is over 40% faster on both resolutions. In God of War, the gap is a lot closer, about 19% on 1080p and 25% on 1440p. But even with the 4060 Ti being faster objectively, the RX 7600 runs the game perfectly comfortable at both 1080p and 1440p resolutions. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the gap is even smaller, and now we only have 6% between the two at 1080p and 11% between the two at 1440p, which looks very good if you consider that the 4060 Ti is 33% more expensive. Dying Light 2 is a much heavier game to run. The 4060 Ti is 25-26% to 26 faster than the AMD, which doesn't matter as much on 1080p, but at 1440p, the difference between an OK 67 FPS and mediocre 53 FPS is noticeable. Of course, this is without any upscaling, which I will include a bit later. Cyberpunk 2077 is typically associated more with Nvidia, but at 1080p, the gap is at a reasonable 17% with the RX 7600 offering a comfy 97 FPS average. On 1440p, it dips just below 60 FPS, while the 4060 Ti stays just above it. 
Doom Eternal is a super easy game to run, uh, even at high resolutions, but because it scales so well, it generally shows raw performance differences between cards very nicely. Uh, here the 4060 Ti is about 30% faster on 1080p and 23% faster on 1440p. Formula One 2022 on ultra high does include some ray tracing effects, uh, which AMD is making very good progress with, but there is still some work to be done. The gap is 45 to 48% between the two cards in Nvidia's favor. Microsoft Flight Simulator on ultra settings turns out to be extremely heavy on the RX 7600, dropping below 60 FPS even on 1080p, with a 39% gap to the RTX 4060 Ti. On 1440p, that gap is almost 50%, although on this resolution, both cards will really require you to drop image quality settings or use upscaling to make it playable. In CSGO, the gap is back to a more reasonable 12% between the two, although both have no issues with this game. At 1440p, the gap widens a bit, but the RX 7600 still holds up more than fine. One game where AMD has been doing relatively well recently is the latest Call of Duty. Uh, here the RX 7600 and the RTX 4060 Ti actually performed very similar to each other. If you're someone who just plays uh, Call of Duty, keep this in mind. Now, to keep it a bit shorter, I'm not going to talk about every single individual game because uh, most games do follow the same trend of what you can expect from these two cards. So let's look at a few summaries instead. On 1080p, the RX 7600 generally delivers that 60 plus FPS experience that they promise. There are a few games where it drops under, but either enabling FSR in Flight Simulator or dropping the setting down to medium in Control solves that problem. And the majority of games run well above 100 FPS. 1440p is um, doable if you're willing to play around with the graphic settings. Uh, generally speaking, you're at 60 plus FPS if you enable FSR, so that's fine. But there's some exceptions like Flight Simulator, for example, where you definitely need to drop the graphics down, or Control, for example, which only supports DLSS for some reason and not FSR. Compared to the 4060 Ti, uh, there's a few games where the gap is relatively small, like uh, Borderlands 3, uh, Watch Dogs Legion, and Call of Duty, and the 7600 even manages to win in Troy Total War. But in some cases, the RTX 4060 Ti is ahead by 40% or more, like Formula One 2022, Spider-Man Remastered, The Witcher 3, and Anno 1800. On average, the RTX 4060 Ti is 23% faster. On 1440p, the 4060 Ti is faster than the AMD card across the board, with multiple results near or even above 50% higher. On average, the 4060 Ti is 25% faster. Now, while gaming, the AMD ended up using a bit more power, about 182 watts versus 148 watts on the RTX 4060 Ti. So even though AMD has made improvements, Nvidia's efficiency is considerably better because it performs about 23 to 25% better, while the AMD uses about 23% more power. Now, that 34 watt power difference probably doesn't matter much to most people. Uh, if you're in the US paying 10 cents for a kilowatt hour, and if you game two hours every day, that's about a $10 difference after four years, which is yeah, close to nothing. With four hours a day at 20 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, the difference goes up to about $40. And while that's still not that much, it's enough to consider it, especially if you game a lot more than that. Here in the EU, however, uh, many people still have ridiculously high electricity prices. So with two hours of gaming per day at 35 cents per kilowatt hour, that is about a 35 euro difference in four years. But with four hours a day at 50 cents per kilowatt hour, that's a 100 euro difference. So in that instance, the cheaper RX 7600 will end up costing the same as the more expensive 4060 Ti today. And this is just while gaming because in idle with a single monitor connected, there's only about a single watt of a difference between the two cards, so that won't really make much of a difference. But with two monitors connected, the AMD GPU is now drawing a constant 27 watts of power in idle, so 
Now, you're using 15 watts more with the RX 7600 just for having your PC on and doing absolutely nothing. Again, if you just have your PC on and running for two hours a day and your energy rates are reasonable, you probably should not care about this at all. But if you're in a place with really high energy prices and you're actually using your gaming PC every day for other things like uh, working or school or YouTube or browsing the internet, that's a 88 euro difference in four years. And I easily have my PC on for more than eight hours every single day. Now, what you can take out of this um, totally depends on your personal use case. It doesn't have to be a big deal at all, but if your electricity rates are higher and you work all day on your PC, and then you spend a few hours gaming every single day, the AMD might end up costing you more. So I really do have some mixed feelings when it comes to this AMD card. I'm actually happy that we have a new $300 GPU with some nice features, especially um, AV1 encoding that the 6000 series didn't have. And assuming you just want to game on 1080p, this card performs well. But just like with the recent NVIDIA launch, I'm also really not that excited about it. And I just feel like I expected more and I kind of do wish we got a bit more than this. I mean, it is okay for $300, but I kind of hope that this brand new AMD card would show up and finally make NVIDIA cards feel unreasonably expensive but that is not the impression I got, and it is kind of underwhelming. Uh, I dare to say it even makes the previously equally unimpressive RTX 4060 Ti a more reasonable option, if you can afford it. Uh, with $100 more, you get 25% more uh, performance with lower power consumption. Um, AMD's FSR is getting better, but the FSR 3 is still some time away, and Nvidia's RTX and DLSS 3 features are still stronger which doesn't make this AMD a bad card. I'm still very happy there is an AMD option in this lower end-ish segment, and it can make sense to get it. Uh, if you only want to game on 1080p, you really need the GPU right now. Uh, the power differences don't really affect you, and this just manages to fit your budget. The RX 7600 will do just fine, and I would totally get it over the 6600 that might cost less nowadays. And if you really need the GPU right now and you can spend $100 extra, I would go for the 4060 Ti. But if this just fits your budget and you don't need a card right now and you're totally fine with waiting two more months, my advice would be to wait a bit and see what the NVIDIA's um, RTX 4060 non-TI will bring. Now, I don't expect it to be an exciting card in any way, but it will have the same $300 MSRP, uh, bringing even more competition to this affordable segment, which is always a good thing. And who knows, maybe AMD has something up their sleeve by then as well. Anyway, that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their RMX Shift power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are very unique as they come with connections on the side instead of the back, making it easier than ever to add and remove cables as well as cable manage your build. They are extremely reliable and power efficient and due to their low noise fans that stop completely under 50% load, they are also extremely quiet. You get a variety of cables for any system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power connection. And on top of that, you get a nice 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful enough. If you liked it and you just want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. Bye guys and see you in the next one.